Hello everyone. I'm gonna print my data set again. So I put in data frame in a new cell. I'm gonna continue working with this. I'm gonna build on the functions we looked at at the previous video. I only need the head just to take a quick look at the data frame that we're working with. Now I can introduce the new function value counts. So I'm going to reuse the group by function. I can go ahead and copy and paste that in a new cell. But at the end, we're going to use value counts. And I want to group them by year. And the value that I want the function to count is artist. For my results, I, I want all of the rows displayed. Then I run my cells. And now we can see all of the years. Value counts for 2010, 2011, 2012, etc. Let's go back to the top to 2010. So let's say I want to verify a value. I'm going to take this one at the top as an example. So I counted four for Christina Aguilera. So if I want to verify that, I can reuse this command from the previous video that pretty much filters for the row data that you specify. In this case, we're going to use uh, Christina Aguilera as a specification for the row in the column artist. So I go ahead and copy that and change the name I wanted to filter for and run my cell. And here in the results, we go to our year column and you can see here that there were in fact four songs for 2010 then 2015 has one and 2016 also has one and we can also verify that so if you go back to our value counts cell and scroll down to 2015 we will find it counted one. If we go down to 2016, we find the same. It also counted one. So we know this function works. Now I want to introduce another function for frequency counts. In this case, I want to count how many songs each artist has. I think it's an interesting piece of data to find out who had the most top 10 songs from 2010 to 2019. So that's what I'm going to do now in a new cell. I'm going to use my group by function again, but this time I want to group by artist and, and the column for the operation will be title and the operation will be non-unique and unique, meaning counting non-unique values. So those are my results. They, they don't tell me much right now because they're not arranged in any particular order. So, but we, here we can use a function that we previously, previously used we can go back up a few cells and we can copy and paste the sort values function which will sort them in descending order. Run my cell and I scroll to the top and you can see the artist with the most hits since 2010 here kind of interesting. Now I want to contrast 
the non-unique function with value counts. So if I go back to my group by function where I group by year, you saw that it counted this way. So what happens if we tell it to count non-unique values? So I go ahead and do that. And that's how pandas counts non-unique values here. And you can tell they're non-unique because there, there isn't even an artist column. It's just the value count. But there's an even easier way to quickly tell when you have the most non-unique values or the least. You can plot it and you do that by typing that plot at the end of the function you're working on. And you can quickly see the highest and the lowest here. But I'm going to run this function again so we can compare the numbers with the plot. I move it to the end of my page and then I copy and paste this function but I'm not going to use plot and we can see here in the results that it checks out 2015 is when you had the most non-unique artist and 2019 is when you had the least. Thank you for watching this video.